questions for reflection. In our first reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, we're given a window into the pattern or way of life in the early church. Before they were called Christians in Antioch, and that's in Acts chapter 11, the early followers of Jesus Christ were often referred to as the way. The apostle Paul, in recounting his own conversion, speaks of having persecuted this way prior to his encounter with the risen Lord on the road to Damascus. This expression, the way, reveals a profoundly important aspect of the understanding of the early Christians. They believed and proclaimed that the Christian faith was to be expressed in a new way of living. It still is. Our relationship with Jesus Christ and membership in His body, the church, is meant to effect change in every aspect of our lives as human persons, and also the way in which we participate in civil society. There's an ancient Christian manuscript entitled The Letter to Diogenetus, which most historians date back to 125 AD. It contained an insight concerning the relationship of Christians to the world, which though seemingly simple, is the key to understanding the heart of the matter. The letter was an apology, which means a defense of the early Christian faith and lifestyle. It was addressed to an anonymous pagan inquirer into the Christian faith. It was written by an unknown author. Its importance is underscored by the fact that it was one of the documents favored by the fathers of the Second Vatican Council and quoted quite often. They use it as the foundational basis of their teaching on social involvement in the documents which address the role of the church in the modern world. It's cited in the Catechism of the Catholic Church in its excellent treatment of the duties of citizenship. It's regularly referred to in social encyclicals and explanatory church sources. The last line of this beautiful description of the early church reads as follows, and I quote, in a word, what the soul is in a body, the Christians are in the world. Christians are still called to be the soul of the world in our age. How do we see our own role in the world? Do we live a unity of life? The Psalmist David says to the Lord, holiness is the beauty of your house, Yahweh, for all time to come. The Catholic Catechism, emphasizing the teaching of the scriptures and the renewal of its emphasis in the Second Vatican Council, underscores the truth that all Christians are called to holiness. And this is paragraph 2013. All Christians in any state or walk of life are called to the fullness of Christian life and to the perfection of charity. All are called to holiness. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. In order to reach this perfection, the faithful should use the strength dealt out to them by Christ's gift, so that doing the will of the Father in everything, they may wholeheartedly devote themselves to the glory of God and to the service of their neighbor. Thus, the holiness of the people of God will grow in fruitful abundance, as is clearly shown in the history of the church through the lives of so many saints." End quote. All of us are called to be saints. The word means holy ones. Do we take this call seriously? Christians are called to be the soul of the world in our age. We are the solution to the brokenness of this age caused by sin and separation. We are to be light in the darkness of the hour. That beautiful phrase, soul of the world, has implications for how we approach every single area of our life. We're called into the world to continue the redemptive mission of Jesus Christ until he returns. We're invited through our baptismal vocation to live the entirety of our lives differently. And in so doing, we invite our neighbors, by word and witness, to consider the truth of the faith we proclaim. In the gospel appointed for this Easter weekday mass, Jesus speaks of being lifted up. Yes, he is foretelling his crucifixion, and he is again demonstrating that all of the Old Testament symbols, including the serpent in the desert lifted up by Moses to heal the people of Israel, were types of what was to come. In the words of the Apostle Paul of the Corinthians, he who knew no sin became sin, so that we could become the very righteousness of God. That's 2 Corinthians 5.21. Jesus is still being lifted up when his disciples, and that means you and me, lift him up in our words and the witness of our lives every day. 
when we take seriously the call to become the soul of the world. How are we doing?